Welcome back everybody to another lesson in C-sharp programming. And in today's video, I'd like to talk about for loops. Because sometimes you'll want to have lines of code repeatedly execute a certain number of times. Now what I mean by that is, let's say for example you want to output the numbers 1 through 10 on a separate line in numerical order. You can easily accomplish this by writing console.writeLine 10 different times and have each one of them display their respective number. So after I write the value 1, I'm just going to copy and paste this 9 more times and have each one display their respective number. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then change their numbers to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now if I were to run this code, we should see each number in numerical order on a separate line. Now for a small program like this, this is all well and good. But what about if we wanted to display the numbers 1 through 20, or say 50, or even 100? We don't want to have to repeatedly copy and paste these lines of code and continuously change the numbers to display because that just gets tedious and can take up a lot of time. And this is where our for loop can come in. Now a for loop is made up of five components. And the first component is our new keyword, for followed by an open and closed parentheses, because inside of the parentheses is going to be our next three components, and each of them are going to get separated by a semicolon. And then our final component is going to be the body of a for loop that's going to contain one or more lines of code all wrapped inside of curly braces. And this creates our basic for loop structure. Now real quick, what we also have coded here is a for loop that doesn't do anything and doesn't ever end otherwise known as an infinite loop. Because if I were to try to run this code right now, we'll see our 10 numbers, and then we're just going to see a blinking cursor because we're currently stuck inside of that infinite for loop, which is why we never see the press any key to continue. So in order to close this program, we just have to close the console window. Now let's fix our for loop so it's not infinite by defining those three components inside the parentheses. And the first component we're going to define is what's called the initializer. Now this is usually a numerical variable that we declare and initialize. So if we take into consideration what we're trying to do, which is output the numbers 1 through 10 on separate lines, I'm going to simply create an integer variable called number and assign it the value 1. Now this initializer only executes one time before the entire loop starts and the variable number can only be used inside of the for loop. So once we're actually past the for loop, then the variable number can no longer be used. The next component is going to be our condition that will provide a way to end the loop. Now, if you've seen my if statements video, you should be familiar with how a conditional statement or a Boolean expression works. So what I'm going to do is define a condition that checks to see if number is less than or equal to 10. This condition is going to be evaluated each time before the loop can actually run. So as long as the condition evaluates to be true, then the loop will run. Because when the condition evaluates to be false, then the loop will be over. So what we currently have is we have the variable number starting at 1, and then we're going to check to see is 1 less than or equal to 10, which will evaluate to be true, and therefore the loop will then enter. But since 1 will never be greater than 10, we're still currently stuck in an infinite loop. And this is where we can define our last component, the iterator. This defines what happens after each iteration of the body of the for loop. And what we would like to happen here is we want the value stored inside of our number variable to increase by 1. And we can actually code that in three different ways. We can either write number equals number plus 1. Or we can make it shorter by saying number plus equal 1. Or, since we're only increasing the value by 1, we can make this shorter again by saying number plus plus. These three different variations all do the same exact thing, and that's increase a value by 1. So now, we no longer have a for loop that's infinite, but it still does nothing. So let's take one of our console write lines and stick it inside of the for loop and get rid of the rest. Now before I change anything else, I want to run what we have here so you can see what will happen. 
And as you can see, we've printed the number 1 10 times. And the way that works is we start with our initializer number equal to 1. We then check to see if number is less than or equal to 10, which is true. So therefore, we wrote the number 1 onto the screen. But then we took our number variable and increased its value by 1, which means now it has the value 2 in it. We then checked that 2 is less than or equal to 10, which is still true. So therefore, we print the number 1 again. And we continue going until the variable number is no longer less than or equal to 10. So now, if I wanted to display the numbers 1 through 10, all I would have to do is change this number 1 in the console write line to use our variable instead. Now when I run this code, we're back to where we started, except instead of using 10 lines of code, we've reduced it down to 4 lines of code using the for loop. Now earlier you heard me say, what if we wanted to display the numbers 1 through 20? or 50, or even 100. Well, since we currently have a for loop that displays the numbers 1 through 10, if I wanted to display the numbers 1 through 20, I just have to change my condition to be less than or equal to 20. Now, if I run this code, we should see the numbers 1 through 20 all displayed onto the screen. And the same thing would be for 50, or 100, or whatever. The point being is that I never have to copy and paste any more lines of code. All I have to do is change when the condition of the loop will end. Now, before I end today's lesson, there's just a couple more things I'd like to show you with what you can do with what you currently have coded. Like, for example, what if you only wanted to display the odd numbers between 1 and 20? Well, since our number variable already starts at our first odd number, 1, Instead of having the iterator increase the value by 1, let's have it increase the value by 2 so that all the even numbers get skipped. So now, instead of having a loop that runs 20 times, our loop only runs 10 times, starting at the value 1, but increasing by 2 to skip every one of the even numbers. And then, if we want to display only the even numbers, we only need to change our starting value to be our first even number, the value 2. And then we'll still get 10 iterations starting at 2 and then only displaying the even numbers. And finally, instead of having our numbers display from least to greatest like we have been, let's change the order and have them display from greatest to least. So that means we're going to have to start our number at the high end of 20. Our condition is going to have to change from being less than or equal to to greater than or equal to 1. And then instead of going up, we want our value to come down. So we can either use the minus minus operator or the other variations, just like I showed with addition. What we currently have coded here should display the numbers 20 through 1 in descending order, just like so. And if I continue to modify the program, I can have it display only the odd numbers or the even numbers, just like I previously demonstrated. And that'll do it for today. I hope with what I've demonstrated, you now have a basic understanding of how to code a for loop in C Sharp. The main thing that you have to remember is when you know how many times you want lines of code to repeat, it's best to code them inside of a for loop. Other types of loops, like a while loop or even a do while loop, have different conditions on when you should use them. But we'll save that for another video. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody.